Using aces can be quite daunting at first, so in this tutorial I'll be covering the bases of aces and how to set it up for a production pipeline. First off, let's try to understand aces. By now it's likely that you're using an sRGB linear workflow, so making the jump to aces shouldn't be that hard, as aces is also a linear workflow. So how do linear workflows work? Well, we apply transforms to our elements, for example the plates, the textures, and the renders, so that they are all in the same colour space to keep consistency. So how does this work for aces? Well, the transform's called IDTs, and they convert images from one colour space to another. In our case, we will be converting two aces CG. This means we can grab images from the internet, convert plates, and bring in renders, and have them all in the same colour space. First, we bring in all of our elements into our desired software, and we set the IDTs for each element. Once the IDTs are selected, it will then convert the elements into ACES CG, which is our colour space we will be working in. Finally, we will have the ODT, which will convert the final element from ACES CG to the desired colour space. So let's try to understand IDTs. There are four main categories of IDTs, ACES, Input, Output and Utility. ACES is used for elements already in ACES. Input is used for footage directly from the camera. Output, which we use for common colour spaces you may be familiar with. And finally, utility for more specific tasks. There are a huge number of IDTs, but to be honest with you, there's only a few you'll be worrying about, and these are the ones you're going to be using 90% of the time. When getting images from the internet, for example PNGs and JPEGs, we will apply the Output sRGB IDT. When we are using plates or other raw linear files, we will be using linear sRGB. Then for renders, we should be rendering an ACES CG so we can bring them straight into our compositing software as ACES CG. There are a lot more transforms, but these are the only three I really find myself worrying about. Once we're in ACES, we work in ACES CG until we export the final comp for grading or for delivery. So now we understand IDTs a little bit better, let's actually see what they're doing inside of Nuke. Here I have three colour checkers, one a linear sRGB EXR that you'd get from exporting from Nuke. Another is an EXR as well, but this time it's in ACES CG, so this is something you'd get from a render engine. And finally we have a PNG, which is a standard sRGB image you'd find from the web. If we bring all the files into RAW we can see the lack of consistency. Linear sRGB looks oversaturated, sRGB images look washed out, and ACES CG will look how we expect. So let's now apply the transform and see how they look. As you can see, they will all be brought into the same colour space, which is ACES CG, and they all look identical. This is the consistency we want from ACES. So now we understand ACES and linear workflows a bit better, it's time to take a look at setting up an ACES CG workflow. For our example, we're going to be using Mari, Maya and Nuke, uh, but you can use pretty much any software which has OCIO support. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to File, New, and we're going to want to select our mesh. So I'm just going to quickly chuck in a quick model, and then in the colour settings, this is where we're actually going to set up ACES. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to ACES here, and we will see that we now have ACES set up. Now if you're on an older version of Mari, you may not have this, and you may have to select a custom OCIO path. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we're then going to have to come to custom OCIO and then we're going to have to find the path and select our config. You then click open and as you can see we now have ACES set up. We can now set this to a standard Arnold VFX thing and you can see here everything is in the correct colour space, all the maps are in uh, ACES CG and we are set up correctly. All of them are 16-bit, so this is perfect for texturing. We can now click Create Project. So now we've loaded in, uh, we'll go over to our Image Manager, and we'll just drag in some textures. Now I'm going to drag in three different kinds of textures. Uh, they're actually the three colour checkers, which we used earlier. Um, so let's drag them in. All of them are different colour spaces, so I can show you now how to set them up correctly. So if you remember, we've now got three different kinds, and as we can see here, this one must be the uh, linear sRGB as it's oversaturated. So what we can do is we can come down to our colour space, and it will automatically set everything to ACES. 
what we're going to want to do is instead go to utility linear srgb and now you can see it matches the aces one we can do the same for the uh, standard srgb png and what we can do is then come down into output and then go down to output srgb and once again you can see they all now match okay so now we've got um our textures in obviously you can start painting and projecting them on so imagine we've got a fully textured model and now we need to export our textures what we're going to want to do is come over to channels export manager and make sure that everything is the same as source color space this way we know everything's going to export as aces cg this means that when we bring it into our render engine we will then see that it is in the correct color space aces cg so now we've set up aces for mari it's time to set it up for maya what we're going to do is we're going to go into the windows section then the settings and preferences and click preferences we're then going to go into the color management tab and we're going to select the rendering space to aces cg now this is here by default in the later versions of maya but as i said earlier if you're using an older version you may have to use the ocio config so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly turn it back and you click use ocio config in order to click this button though you first have to define a path for your ocio config and then click use ocio config it will take a while to load in a couple of seconds and once it has you can then click save so now we've loaded in aces we will open up our hypershade and let's drop down a file real quick so i'll quickly drop down one of the color checkers i'll drop down the png so this should come in looking pretty washed out and it does so what we can then do is go down to color space here and this is just your idts uh let's say in mari so we can just literally drop this down and we've got to go to output uh which will be around here and we've got to go to output srgb We'll then see it brings it into the right color space and everything's looking correct so same applies obviously to uh, your uh, linear files and your aces cg files you just need to set the right color space and it will all bring them into aces okay so last but not least i'm going to show you how to set up aces for nuke what we're going to want to do is press s on our keyboard to bring up the project settings and then go over to the color tab once we're here we're going to want to go on click on this nuke default and set that to aces 1.1 once again, if this is a newer version of the software, you will have this here. But if you're using an older version, which doesn't have the uh, ACES things by default, you're going to have to go to custom and put in your OCIO path and then select the config. So once we're using it, uh, everything should be fine. Um, so I'm going to actually quickly jump over to a different, different scene right now. So I'm now going to go over the final part of the pipeline. So once you've got your renders out, which are coming in as ACES CG, and you've got all your elements in ACES CG, uh, you're going to have this issue of my footage isn't linear. So what we need to do is we need to color calibrate our footage. And the way we're going to do this is with this cool little gizmo. Now, alternatively, you can go into DaVinci Resolve and use uh, this the, their little tool and linearize the footage, uh, color calibrate it, and then export it um, as ACES CG from there. But that way is a bit convoluted and just to streamline pipeline, I personally prefer bringing it into Nuke. So there's this really cool uh, plugin by Marco Mayer and it's called MM Color, uh, Color Gizmo, I think, or, or something like that. I'll leave a link down in the description and it's a really useful tool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to uh, the gizmo and we're gonna plug our plate in as the source with the color checker and our color checker as the target so what we're going to then do is come here and grab these uh these little pins i guess and we're going to put them in each corner so that these little dots cover our our whole thing and we can increase the size the sample size by 100 i guess and that way we've got better coverage so once again we're going to have to do the same for the target so we'll just pick these and we can then oh, we can then move these across uh, this one we won't actually need to improve the target because it's all the same color um, I guess we could set it to like 100 as well but I don't think it would make much difference 
Um, and then what we need to do is click Calculate Matrix. Now this will basically um, adjust our white point uh, and color calibrate our plate so that it is perfectly fine for a, a linear ACES CG workflow. This means that your renders will literally just composite right into your plate like so much so much quicker and so much easier and I would definitely recommend doing this um, like 100%. Uh, you can already see the difference like that's a whole lot of grading you just don't have to do. So I'd really recommend this uh, and once again what you can then do is then write this out so you write this out as like place on plate underscore aces cg dot exr uh, make sure you have it set to uh, your the right color space so for example we're using default scene linear and default scene linear as you can see is actually aces cg so it's is pretty much pretty much the same um, but yeah so I hope you kind of now have a bit of a better understanding of how to set up aces uh, you know, across numerous different softwares and uh, the actual techniques you need to be using and um, a better understanding of IDTs and all that kind of stuff because when I like was actually trying to learn about this stuff there wasn't a lot of videos out there and so hopefully this is just like a place where you can get started with ACES and get a bit of a basic understanding of how it works and um, yeah I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.